Hello, this is Robert Allegretti with Global Bay Mobile Technologies. And this is going to be a brief overview of some of the major functions in the GB Mobile Retail Inventory Module. Um, typically, uh, the application is going to start from a login screen such as this um, because we are uh, using uh, store system credentials uh, as part of the integration so that users can uh, use their uh, familiar login information without having to remember uh, uh, another set specific to the mobile application. So uh, from here we can go ahead and uh, do the login and here we have a main uh, menu structure and, and we're going to start with uh, one of the most common operations which is receiving um, so we are now uh, at the uh, back of the store generally, pulling items uh, as they come in off of a truck and entering them into the store system. Uh, and we have two general options here. We can receive by carton or by detail. Uh, receive by carton implies uh, that we have uh, uh, items that are boxed, uh, that in each box has an associated carton code uh, that's been assigned uh, uh, from the warehouse or from the uh, store corporate system and scanning the carton number alone is enough to uh, bring in uh, the rest of the uh, appropriate item information according to what is in that particular carton. Receiving by detail uh, implies that we are uh, receiving individual items at a time. Um, this may apply depending on the uh, the type of shipment that's being received. Uh, it could be a small order or it may come from an individual vendor rather than from a, a warehouse. Uh, in addition, uh, in the case where uh, perhaps a carton-based order uh, has cartons that are broken um, or has have been opened uh, or for any reason uh, look suspicious and need to be counted individually, uh, then that would be a detail-based uh, receipt. Uh, so here we're required to enter an order number and then we can go ahead and start scanning items and seeing the details for those particular items uh, or even uh, apply manual entry in the case that uh, barcodes are not feasible. Alright, so back to the main menu. Uh, one of the other major functions is transfers. Uh, several options here as well. Uh, so transfer out uh, implies that we're um, uh, taking items from the current location and uh, shipping them off either to another store uh, or perhaps back to a central uh, warehouse location. Uh, so we would select a type based on those criteria. Uh, we would select the uh, authorizing party as well as the destination, be it uh, another store number again or a warehouse location. A reason for the transfer out, such as um, you know, overstock in this location, uh, perhaps uh, uh, a corporate request based on a demand in another location, etc. And if applicable, uh, if there's a, say a, a third party carrier involved, perhaps a shipping uh, number as well. Once we've captured that uh, header information for the transfer out, uh, we can go ahead and uh, start adding items to the transfer. Again, if we wish, we can uh, apply a carton you know, concept here where we can um, box up items and uh, group them in cartons and apply a barcode for the carton at large, uh, or we can do uh, individual items uh, in the case of uh, uh, transfer in, per se. So uh, opposite process, receiving items that have been transferred from another store location. It uh, can be scanned by carton, uh, much like the general receiving process, or by detail, where again we're required to apply some header information, uh, who authorized it, where it came from, and the carton number. And then we can go ahead and start uh, scanning in individual items uh, for a chance for in. Okay. One of the other major functions uh, is price lookup. Um, so here we see we can uh, scan uh, individual UPC uh, or enter it manually and then perform the lookup. 
and available information we can get back includes uh, a description of the item, uh, possibly uh, a detailed description, um, pricing information, uh, as well, including uh, historical pricing information in regards to sale pricing, so we can we can set a date range uh, and see previous sale prices. And of course, one of the other major functions being inventory count, um, where we are trying to uh, uh, reduce shrink or track uh, physical inventory uh, in the store. So in the case of uh, physical count, um, we're going to a specific location on the shelf uh, or, or in the stockroom, say, and uh, scanning in items uh, individually and building up a uh, a physical record of the uh, items in that location. Or in the case of a cycle count, um, we have a uh, possibly corporate mandated uh, say set of items um, that we need to go and uh, uh, account for all individually uh, by scan or by manual entry, preferably by scan of course. Now, once uh, all of these functions uh, can be entered in, uh, this solution is designed to function fully offline if necessary. Uh, so over the course of a given workday, um, uh, all of this, uh, these processes can take place uh, because we are, uh, in most cases, hosting an entire uh, SKU file uh, for the given uh, uh, store or retail environment uh, on the device locally uh, that gets updated daily. So once we've uh, completed the day's functions, uh, we can always go back and uh, review uh, records that we created on this handheld. Uh, we can make, make modifications if need be, uh, or even uh, uh, delete records or make updates and that sort of thing. And then at the end of the day's activities, um, the device is generally uh, synced by either by Cradle or, or by uh, uh, being moved into an appropriate, say, Wi-Fi environment, um, and everything uh, is passed uh, from the handhelds to the local store ISP, and from each individual store's ISP back to a corporate master server. So all of the day's records are uh, synced up uh, back to the corporate environment for tracking and reporting. And then at the same time, any updates, uh, newly created documents, say, uh, for uh, transfer requests, etc., as well as updates to the PLU or SKU file uh, would be pushed down to the handheld uh, at the same time. Okay, and the other two uh, functions listed here, uh, MOS and ticket request, are uh, more germane to the local store environment, um, MOS, uh, it stands for Mark Out of Stock, and basically allows the user to uh, uh, patrol the aisles, as it were, and uh, go ahead and scan an item, uh, or rather a uh, shelf tag in the case of a, um, a hole uh, in the run, uh, and then apply uh, a specific reason code. Uh, and items uh, that uh, belong in that in that specific location, um, which could uh, uh, trigger uh, requirements uh, for the stocking crew, say overnight, uh, or for uh, order entry in the case of a discrepancy, uh, where the uh, system indicates that there are items on hand, uh, but they cannot be located. And for ticket requests, uh, also another uh, sort of shelf audit function, uh, in the case where we have missing uh, price or sign information, uh, then we can go ahead and uh, start adding items, uh, you know, scanning items that are on the shelf that are missing appropriate uh, markings, uh, and then that can uh, send a, a trigger to management to uh, go ahead and correct those issues uh, uh, in the aisles.